first bit is the 45 degree lock miter bit. This is the perfect bit for making mitered corners because it increases the gluing surface area and locks the joint in place. Regular miters have a tendency to slide out of place during glue up. The lock miter bit fixes this problem, securing it and making it easy to clamp. This also creates a seamless joint that works great for a large number of projects. Some manufacturers will provide a setup block that makes it easy to set up because there's a profile machine right into the side. Place the block on the table, adjust the height of the bit until it matches the profile and lock your router. Move your fence forward until it touches the edge of the block and secure it. Keep in mind that your material needs to be the same thickness as the setup block in order for this to work. Let's set up this bit without using our setup block. First, place a line in the center of your material, as well as a line on the center of your router bit. Install and secure the bit into the router, place the stock next to the bit, and adjust the height until the two lines meet. Lock your router into place, then adjust your fence forward so the bit cuts the profile without penetrating the top surface of your material. Lock your fence and we're ready to make our first test cut. On the test cut, we cut both pieces of wood flat on the table. After the test cut, take your two pieces, flip one over, and on a flat surface, slide the two boards together. Using a straight edge, we can check to see if the boards are even. If this joint is not even, your router bit is not perfectly centered to your material. Simply micro adjust the bit up or down half the distance of the offset. Keep in mind, you might also have to readjust your fence. I've made all the proper adjustments and resecured my settings. Let's go ahead and make another test cut. The bit height must be set exact before moving on to the next step. Plan on making several of these test cuts. As you can see, our two pieces are completely even. The only thing we have left now is to adjust our fence so our cut will come to a perfect point. If it does not come to a point, we'll need to move our fence backwards. If it cuts through the top of the material, move your fence forward. Lock your fence into place and we're ready to start making our project. One pass will be made on the table, the second pass will be made up on the fence. Repeat this process for all your videos.
after cutting your four pieces, we are ready for assembly. As you can see, it is very simple to put together. So whether you're making a small box or a large cabinet, the lock miter is a handy bit to have in your shop. Let's go ahead and move on to the next bit in the set. The second bit in the set that we'd like to show you today is the reversible glue joint bit. The reversible glue joint bit is an excellent bit because it increases the gluing surface area, which adds strength to our joint. Other glue joints have a tendency to slide up and down when we apply the clamping pressure. The reverse glue joint eliminates that, resulting in a smooth surface on both the top and the bottom side. And this is going to reduce our sanding time. And unlike biscuit or dowels, which can be seen with improper placement, this bit allows us to have a seamless joint regardless of where we route or trim our stock. Some manufacturers provide the setup blocks which has the profile machined right into the side. Set the block on the table, adjust the height of the bit until the profiles match and lock your router. Then adjust the fence forward until it touches the block and lock it. Keep in mind that the material thickness needs to be the same as the setup block in order for this to work. Today, we're going to show you how to set up this bit without using a setup block. First, place a mark in the center of your material along with a mark in the center of the router bit. Then, install and secure the router bit into your router. Place the stock next to the bit and then adjust the height until those two points meet and lock your router into place. Next, we want to offset the outfeed side of the fence 3 32ths of an inch forward. We do this by installing shims on the back side or attaching a face to the front and securing it. Finally, we want to align the outfeed side of the fence using a straight edge. We align the outfeed side of the fence with the bottom cutting edge of the bit, like this. Secure your fence and we're ready to make our test cut. In order to use this joint on multiple boards to create large panels, cut one side face up, flip the board, cut the second joint face down. Repeat this process on all of your pieces. If you happen to get snipe on the end of this cut, it means that your outfeed fence is not properly aligned with the cutting edge of your bit. Simply adjust the fence forward, secure it, and it should correct the problem. If your two pieces are not even, you have not located the center of the bit. Adjust the height of the router bit, half the distance of the offset, secure the router, and your two pieces should be even. After making all of our adjustments, we end up with a nice, flush surface ready for glue up. Let's go ahead and move on to the next bit in the set. The last bit in our set is the drawer lock bit. This is an important bit because it locks the joint together creating a strong drawer without having to purchase additional jigs or fixtures. 
this single bit allows you to make three different styles of drawers. The recessed face, the attached face, and the solid face. This bit allows you to make a drawer for almost any project that you can imagine. Some manufacturers will provide a setup block with the profile already machined into the side. Place this over the bit, adjust the height of the bit until the profiles match and lock your router. Then move your fence forward until it touches the edge of the block and lock your fence in place. Keep in mind the material needs to be the same thickness of your setup block. Now we want to show you how to set this bit up without the setup block. The bit needs to be 3 8 inch from the top of the table. I found that a brass setup bar works great for this. Place the bar on the table, adjust the height of the bit until the top of the cutter is flush with the brass bar, and then lock your router into place. Next, we want to set up the fence so that the leading edge of the bit cuts halfway through the thickness of the material that we're working with. Then lock your fence into place. The sides of our drawers will be cut upright along the fence, while the fronts and the backs will be cut flat along the table. Let's go ahead and make this test cut. If you find that this joint is a little bit loose or a little bit tight, it just means that our router bit isn't set up exactly 3 eighths of an inch from the top of the table. If this joint is loose, micro adjust the fence up. If it's tight, micro adjust it down and resecure your router. Now if you find that the joint is a little bit proud or a little bit shy, we'll be readjusting the fence either forward or backwards to fix this problem. If you find that the side of the drawer is shy, we'll be moving the fence backwards half the distance that we're off. If it's proud, we'll be moving it forward half the distance that we're off and then resecuring the fence. Using a zero clearance fence is beneficial here. The front and backs of the drawer cuts are made with the stock on the table. The side cuts are made up against the fence. If you find tear-out is an issue, scribe a line prior to routing and use backer boards. 